I want to tell you a story about success, about failure, about conflict, about genius, about creativity, about trust, about relationships. I want to tell you a story about life. Uh, and then uh, I want to relate it to what we all go through, which is uh, conflict in our own personal lives, in the, the things that we coach, the, the organizations that we belong to. Every person behind me on this board is a member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, Effa Manley, Branch Rickey, Judge Kennesaw, Mount Landis, Happy Chandler, Larry Doby, Bill Veck, and of course, Jackie Robinson. Uh, the reason I want to tell this story is because I think uh, all of us, no, not, not I think, I know all of us go through conflict with respect to our relationships uh, and, and the things, the organizations that we belong to. Uh, and I think sometimes we have this tendency to think that our situation is this unique set of circumstances that no one's ever had to deal with before. Uh, and yet, obviously, we people have dealt with conflict and struggle throughout all time. One of my favorite stories is um, is the Jackie Robinson story uh, and, and all the ancillary people that were involved in the Jackie Robinson story. So what most people are familiar with is in 1947, Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. Uh, he played for the Brooklyn Dodgers, and he was the first black athlete in the 20th century to do so. Uh, and, you know, we celebrate that moment in time, and, and, and uh, we, we talk about the courage of Jackie Robinson. Uh, very few times do I think people stop and consider why baseball wasn't integrated up until 1947, and, and they think that there's only one right side to this argument. The matter of fact, uh, uh, the fact of the matter is that leading up to that moment, there, there were two sides and uh, there were many people involved in, in deciding uh, whether or not baseball should be integrated. And uh, I just want to tell that story. So uh, Jackie Robinson uh, grew up on the West Coast uh, in, uh, in California as a graduate of UCLA. Uh, and uh, at the time, Black people were not allowed to go to officer candidate school. Uh, they could serve in the military, but they couldn't be officers. Jackie Robinson got an exemption, knew some people, got an exemption, ended up in Fort Hood, uh, Texas. Uh, and uh, at the time, someone confronted him. Uh, he, was, uh, he was a black man. He sat beside a white woman on a bus. Uh, and uh, at the time, 1942, that infuriated a lot of people, despite the fact that the, uh, the Army had been integrated uh, and Jackie Robinson knew his rights, that he, he could in fact sit beside a white woman on a bus. They confronted him, they pointed fingers into his chest and, and they obviously called him the name. And uh, Jackie Robinson refused to go to the back of the bus. Uh, his case went to, to court. Uh, he was later dishonorably discharged. Uh, and so out of the military, uh, by the way, his, his battalion ended up serving in World War II. So if Jackie Robinson doesn't confront those people, if Jackie Robinson isn't a rebel, Jackie Robinson goes to World War II and maybe this story is untold. But as it was, uh, Jackie Robinson needed something to do. Uh, the Kansas City Monarchs, a member of the Negro League at the time, uh, many of their roster was fighting in World War II. So there were some openings. Jackie Robinson tried out, he made the team, uh, setting in motion his baseball story. Now, um, what most people, I think the, the, the person that maybe is most uh, familiar up here besides Jackie Robinson is Branch Rickey. So Branch Rickey, he wants to integrate baseball uh, and uh, he wants to do it with the right person. Well, Jackie Robinson was playing for the Kansas City Monarchs, and at that time, Negro League Baseball was, uh, was a thriving industry. Uh, and uh, they were playing in uh, ballparks uh, that uh, were often home to, to organized baseball, members of the, the major leagues. Jackie Robinson played for the Kansas City Monarchs, and he, his owner was white. And that's significant because uh, Branch Rickey knew that if he could go to an organization that had a white owner, uh, that he could basically poach Jackie Robinson uh, and take him to Major League Baseball. And, and he couldn't be blocked. He, that, that, that effort wasn't gonna be thwarted because if members of that back, black baseball team found out that the white owner 
prevented one of theirs from going to the highest level of baseball, there would be a revolt of sorts. So Branch Rickey goes to the Kansas City Monarchs, uh, and he basically says to Jackie Robinson, hey, I want you to, to play for the Brooklyn Dodgers uh, after some consulting, uh, some persuading, I'm sure. Uh, the, and this story obviously is well, well told in uh, many different versions, but uh, Branch Rickey is the first owner of Major League Baseball to break the color barrier, and Jackie Robinson makes his debut April 15th, 1947. Now, what's interesting is uh, all of these members, again, are members of the Baseball Hall of Fame, which means they contributed incredible things to the sport. Judge Kennesaw Mount Landis died in 1944. Jackie Robinson breaks the color barrier in 1947. Uh, his death, the timing of his death, uh, was no, was no uh, coincidence as to when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. Despite no wording uh, that, that, that segregation uh, was required, uh, Kennesaw Mount Landis was tasked, when he was hired as baseball's first commissioner, he was tasked with cleaning up the sport. Uh, there was lots of gambling going on, and basically the game was corrupt in the eyes of the fans. And so the owners that hired him uh, believed that he would clean the sport up, that he would... Uh, he would give it uh, this trust in the eyes of the community again, where they could show up at the, the sport and they could knew that it was being played on the up and up and there weren't gamblers and, and, and athletes weren't throwing games to make money. So that is in fact what Kennesaw Mount Landis did. He cleaned the game up. He contributed to the sport in incredible ways. Um, some people even claim that, that he and Babe Ruth alone saved the sport uh, in the 1920s. Well, times change, and, and uh, Judge Kennesaw Mount Landis had a hard time changing with those times. And um, whereas people started to know that, you know, if 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 people can serve in our in our in our military and they can they can serve our country fighting uh, in World War II, uh, maybe it's time that we we allow them to play in our sports. And and Kennesaw Mount Landis uh, tried to block that effort at every turn. Uh, he was replaced by a, uh, by a man by the name of Happy Chandler. Happy Chandler was a baseball player. Happy Chandler served in World War II. Uh, and he noticed that these things that others were noticing, that uh, if, if, if these athletes can serve in our military, don't you think it's time that they, they can play in our game? And so uh, Branch Rickey, Winter meetings of 1946, uh, they talk about integrating baseball. The owners vote 15 to 1 that the game should stay as is, that status quo should be served. Uh, the, the black athletes should continue playing in the Negro Leagues. The white athletes should continue playing in uh, Major League Baseball. Uh, and Branch Rickey is the lone dissenting voice. And he goes to Happy Chandler and he says, Hey, every other owner wants to keep the status quo. Uh, this is going to be really difficult if I don't have support from the commissioner. Uh, and despite him being born in Kentucky and having Southern roots, Happy Chandler decides to uh, go along with, uh, with Branch Rickey. And he says, I believe that if, uh, if they're capable of playing the sport, that merit alone should determine if they're qualified. So Happy Chandler... Uh, who who replaces Judge Kennesaw Mount Landis sets in motion uh, Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier. Don't believe it happens without Happy Chandler. Uh, so Jackie Robinson is the first athlete to break the color barrier. The first black athlete to win a World Series, one of two, was Larry Doby. Larry Doby was the first athlete to uh, to integrate the American League, whereas Jackie Robinson integrated the National League. Uh, literally less than uh, two months later, uh, Larry Doby enters the, uh, the the Cleveland Indians in the American League and plays for the American League. Now, uh, Larry Doby did not have immediate success like Jackie Robinson. Larry Doby struggled. Larry Doby was asked to do a lot of different things, uh, but Larry Doby struggled. Uh, ultimately, uh, he became a Hall of Famer. He had an incredible career. But uh, that first year, uh, he, he endured all of the struggles that Jackie Robinson endured. Uh, they were in different leagues, and, and he, was, uh, he was traveling alone uh, for, the, for the time being. He, he did uh, 
have some, some other black athletes join him the following year. But Larry Doby certainly deserves to be recognized in the, in the Jackie Robinson story. Now, uh, someone that, that deserves a ton of credit for Larry Doby's success and the integration of the sport is a gentleman by the name of Bill Veck. Uh, Bill Veck was a creative genius. Bill Veck uh, owned many teams, uh, but with respect to this story, Bill Veck wanted to integrate baseball in the American League. Look, he's, a, he's an owner of the Indians, and he was competitive, and he, and he wanted to, to, to challenge the Red Sox, and he wanted to challenge the Yankees. And, and long before uh, Major League Baseball drafts and, uh, and farm systems weren't ubiquitous, they weren't everywhere, oftentimes you had to go scout your own players and find your players. And, and Bill Veck knew that the Negro Leagues were full of amazing athletes. And so Bill Veck uh, went, and uh, he decided to, to sign – Larry Doby, which is a significant comment. Whereas Branch Rickey poached Jackie Robinson from the Kansas City Monarchs, uh, Bill Veck had the integrity uh, and the wherewithal to recognize that um, athletes deserve to be, to be compensated for sure, but so did their owners. And uh, Larry Doby was a member of the Newark Eagles uh, in the, uh, the Negro Leagues. And uh, and, and Bill Veck knew that uh, he wanted to develop relationships and he knew as an owner how, how challenging it is to, to run franchises. And so he went to the only lady that's in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Her name is Effa Manley, an uh, incredible woman with her own incredible story as all of these people have their own incredible stories. So Bill Veck goes to Effa Manley and uh, basically asks for Larry Doby's a contract for ten thousand dollars, a bargain for Vec. Uh, he he was he was worth more than that. But being a Negro leaguer, uh, he knew that he could probably get Loby Dare, Lo, Larry Doby at a cheap price, and in fact he did. But he compensated F. A. Manley uh, ten thousand up front and five thousand uh, for continued success. Uh, and F. A. Manley. Uh, she was uh, she was the owner of the Newark Eagles in the Negro League and. Uh, for the longest time, they were struggling, trying to, um, to, to beat the Homestead Grays. The Homestead Grays were the equivalent of like the Yankees in, in the Negro Leagues. Uh, and she was, she was constantly uh, an ambassador for her, her sport. And she was trying to uh, find a way to overcome that hurdle that, that Bill Veck was trying to overcome. Bill Veck was trying to beat the Yankees and Red Sox, and he did in 1948, uh, the, the last world championship for the Cleveland Indians, the first world championship with a black athlete on it. But uh, Bill Veck went to Effa Manley, and, uh, and by the way, uh, the Newark Eagles won a, a Negro League World Series in 1946 with Larry Doby on the team. Uh, and so he knew that she had incredible ties to her athletes. Uh, she was a thriving business owner. Uh, and, and if you think about it from the standpoint that once the color barrier started to fall, Many of these these black business owners, these black owners of, of Negro League teams, were going to see the industry fall apart. Uh, that's that's hard to comprehend, right? I don't think any business owner wants to see their business collapse, and yet that is in fact what integration of the game did. It collapsed the Negro Leagues. So uh, I share this story because there's something called the end of history illusion where we think that uh, we have grown to a point where we, we are more empathetic than our ancestors, we are more intelligent than our ancestors, that uh, there is a right side to things uh, and, and we need to be on that right side. And we understand what that right side is. The reason I wanted to share this story in the coaching series, uh, Coaching Beyond the X's and O's, is conflict is hard, struggle is hard. We, we are all motivated by different things, and we all have different perceptions of those things. Uh, and, and I think that uh, sharing a story that in 2024 feels like there is only one right side, and that right side is on the social justice of permitting black athletes to play in Major League Baseball. That feels like the only side there is to this story. And yet, back during World War II times, there were, in fact, two very distinct sides and and many people 
had a hard time deciding which side was the right side. There was a lot of support for keeping the game of baseball segregated. Uh, and uh, just recently in 2024, we've integrated the statistics to recognize that uh, history believes that, um, that everyone deserves an opportunity to play this game of baseball. And despite the fact that they weren't given that opportunity, that we should integrate the statistics. So uh, I think it's a, it's a great story to start with, uh, to share that uh, each of these people, all recognized by Major League Baseball as, as incredible models of the game, people that need to be recognized for all time, that they had their struggle. Uh, there was a ton of conflict. And um, despite the fact that Jackie Robinson is the most recognized face on the board, all of these people did in fact contribute to the Jackie Robinson story. Uh, that, uh, that, that, that this, this incredible game has been influenced by so many different people. And I would like to, to refer back to this story as I share the mental models that, uh, that I think can help us all become the best coaches uh, over and above our sport, over and above what it is, how we teach our sport. I think there are certain things we need to understand when dealing with conflict. And uh, if, if I can be so inclined, I'm gonna reference this story throughout the rest of the videos, but I thought it'd be a great story to lead with, the Jackie Robinson story and all the folks that were involved in that story. 